Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, what is episode number nine of Vinyl with Taste. And um, I'm Old School Pat. I'm Dance Hall Neil. This week we're doing another artist spotlight um, because we thought it was appropriate um, with the recent passing of Genesis Peorge of Throbbing Gristle and Psychic TV and lots of other things, right? Well, Coon Transmissions, Splinter Test, um, and then his solo stuff that he did. He was also in Pig Face for a little while. I feel like anything, everything he did, even the Psychic TV's Acid House phase, I think, was worthwhile. I had many psychedelic nights to that. And thinking, you know, they were, uh, it was meant for this activity. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't like, if to, to me, like, I don't, I don't listen to rave culture or anything like that, but for when Genesis was in it, I feel like he, he never did, he never followed anything. Right. And they said that he was, he was one of the first acid house musicians, one of the first industrial. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And they, they coined the phrase industrial music for industrial people, right? They did. They so, did, and everything came after that. And they, yeah. they're very underrated. Yeah. Very underrated. Genesis Biorgi, I, you know, with this passing, a lot of people have been posting things. and um, You've seen that too, huh? One of the quotes I saw this week was where he said, um, you know, music can be made out of anything, you know, anything that produces a noise is music. Yeah. And, um, and I thought that was, that pretty much summed up <clears throat> a lot of um, his philosophy. He played bass, but he did... Um, and I say his, but I should be saying there. There, right, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I, I, I dig it. And he was even early into that. Like, fucking, like, from the 70s, he was like, yeah, you know. Yeah. You notice his eyebrows are always, like, arched and shit. You know, yeah. very feminine, kind of, like, looking in, yeah. like, in 76 and 7. But uh, Coombe and even Throbbing Gristle, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Neil, but I, I think they were both <clears throat> um, performing in England by, like, 1975, way before. Yeah. Um, the Sex Pistols and Punk and, and that. Well, yeah, I I heard I got into Throbbing Gristle first because I thought they were a punk band. Um, I got in well, one of the several groups yeah. that I got into. I used Sniff and Glue as a record buying guide, mm -hmm. so I was buying I was buying um, I like weird. I was buying Blue Oyster Cult, ACDC, um, oh, all, yeah, yeah. Parliament Funkadelic, it's all in, in that magazine. Gristle, yeah. yeah, anything that was in there. Um, Cherry Vanilla, which yeah, which yeah. ain't even really punk rock you yeah, know yeah. she's more of this like this I don't want to get too off topic yeah. let's get to the music yeah sure start from the beginning let's start from the, the very beginning um and I, I don't I don't want to get too much into uh good night <laughs> too much into what to do this early worm see how young he was there he was a kid there Wow, early worm. I've never heard of that one. And it's like 68, 69. It took me forever to get this. This was the first uh, Deus Records release. And I did the 500. I missed it because I was just uh, turned on to the the label. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot of like crappy, like uh, cold wave and industrial type stuff. But what does early worm sound like? Is it anything like Coom Transmissions or the uh, Throbbing Gristle? That, I'll tell you what it sounds know. like to me. <clears throat> um, I do love the record, so I, I, I'm not, I don't want to sound brash when I say it. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like uh, three or four kids fucking around in the attic. Oh, so it's, it's really uh, kind of amateurish then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they were still in school, you know? Yeah. And I'm not going to go through everything. Or I have, there's... Uh, three Coom transmissions that came out. I'll pick out the one I think that has the coolest art. And that's this one. His actually, his mom and dad. That's his real mom and dad? Yeah. God, his dad looks terrifying, like like a David Lynch dad. He's a, uh, he looks like Leland Palmer. He was a jazz uh, musician. Wow. Like the back there, the, like the members. That's Genesis right there. All bearded and shit. Look at that. You can barely tell it's him. Yeah. So that's the first Coom release? Yeah, but... Um, was any of this really released? What was... No, this was never released until this okay. came out. So chronologically, this comes before, you know, Thro everything else. Yeah. But um, just um, 
What was the first release? All right, the, the, here's right. the here's the re, uh, John Peel rejection letter. Thanks for the tape. Certainly different. <laughs> Not quite what we're looking for. Have a good summer. Yeah. John Peel. Wow. Interesting, huh? <laughs> you have a good day, guys. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Because, you know, they would do shows where they're like, like, uh, like, cutting themselves and rolling in glass and, like, you know. Wow. The bizarre soundtrack. Well, a uh, bizarre Throbbing Gristle-esque soundtrack. Mm -hmm. In the in the back, um, I've collect, I've been collecting Genesis stuff forever. You know that. Yeah, that's why this is neat. I haven't seen half of the stuff you're pulling out. I want to. I'm not gonna. Like I said, I'm not gonna pull out everything because we'd yeah. be here for for days. Just stuff that I think is key. I like this for a couple of reasons. This is a cool compilation. It's got um, Coom. Yeah. Um, what does Coom stand for again? That's a good question. It was an England's Dream, and I just can't remember. Was it an England's Dream? I don't remember reading that. Yeah, they talked about um, they talked about um, the prostitution exhibition that Coombe did oh, right, yeah, right yeah. before <clears throat> dropping her. That's right. Yeah. This is this is cool. I got this for Coombe transmissions, but uh, I ended up being a big Derek Bailey fan. He's a, a jazz. He's right there, jazz guitar player noise guitar player really yeah. i mean you hear stuff it's like dun, 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 dun. so was this actually out of the time or is this like a bootleg after the fact kind of thing uh this is a bootleg after the fact oh, okay um look this um 74 1974 huh? that was the coon shit and then uh, f uh feminist improv and um improv group is really cool which is just a bunch of chicks screaming This, this was a good one. I, I like this. Like I said, I bought this and then became a Derek Bailey fan, not even related to this. And then came back, you know, because I'm a, I'm a big free jazz improvisation guy, you know? Like, I, lo I love all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. See, I got to do it, man. I got to pull out my penis. It's like... I gotta pull out this one because I love the artwork for this too. This is a King Transmission song. But I like that. I like that artwork. It's so yeah, fucking weird. Yeah, show that one. So like they were recording it. Also, Deus Records. This is why I like Deus Records. You could say what they want, you know, a pansy like cold wave industrial label. But I mean, they put out some good shit. They put some um, William Burrow stuff too. It's really early. Oh, nice. And um, also, if you like a, Italian noise, uh, some M M V stuff. That guy's pretty wild too. Like their their reissues are, are great. If you catch them early, man, twenty bucks. If you catch them early, I did not catch that early worm early, man. It took me uh, it took me a while to fucking get. What is the name of that album? This is um, Home Aged and the Eighteen Month Hope. Man, dude, I remember I remember getting these records and living. I was living in Lakeland at the time. Isn't it hard to get Robin Gristle on vinyl? Yeah, super hard. Yeah. Let's just go to that. This is a good one. Robin Gristle Editions, Frankfurt, Berlin. Yeah. He said most of their shit is live. Most of like their recorded shit is live. Yeah. Is that cozy on the yeah front? Yep, playing guitar. Now she was um, <clears throat> his girlfriend at the time, wasn't she? Early, early, early. Up until like the band, uh, Tom, Tom Gerson disbanded. No, name? not that far. Okay. Like early into it though. I like, I like this record. I I came. I think the dude wanted like so much money for this. I'm like, dude, man, I can fucking twenty dollars. You can sell it right now. You can hang on to it. This is what I tell people when I'm buying shit on this talk. You can hold on to that record for three or four years if you want to, but I can give you a fucking, like, 20 bucks now for right now. The old negotiator. <laughs> well, like, yeah, you don't have to sell it to me. You don't have to sell it at all, but, you know, I, I, I'm, I got my PayPal open. Right. A lot of the times they're like, fuck you, guy. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. 
This, I like, I this like is Discogs. You're talking about Discogs.com. Yeah. yeah. The only only way to get good music. If it wasn't for Discogs.com, I wouldn't have any Gene Lewis Costas records. Yeah. Right. I like this for the. Uh, this is live. It's like a TV early live one. I like the. Oh shit. Uh, Oh damn, he has his uh, stuff out in there, doesn't he? Man, I don't know. I'll just show it real quick. If you didn't see it, I'm not gonna turn it back around. Yeah. This is when he was into like all like the piercing and stuff like that. Uh, the Psychic TV they do Skinhead Moonstomp '84 and Nursery Rhymes, and then the B side is pretty much a dude just banging on an oil drum for 20 minutes. I know. I did not stay for the B side on that. <laughs> so we're in the throbbing gristle. Show your uh, show your uh, best of. Okay, so I'll I'll show you the fuck um, with this Tony Conrad shit. <clears throat> the compilation. This is the um, throbbing gristle greatest hits entertainment through pain, and it has a lot of the songs that they're really infamous for, like Hamburger Lady. Um, What's it called again? <clears throat> Hamburger Lady. The uh, album. Oh, it's called Greatest Hits Entertainment Through Pain. Greatest Hits. And, uh, but getting back to Hamburger Lady, which That's is... That's not it. Funk Beyond Jazz. I thought that was Funk Beyond Jazz. No, this is this is the greatest. Oh, album. fuck. Man. Yeah. Man, sorry. But, um, okay, so Hamburger Lady with this really queasy kind of musical background. Now, I heard that he wrote... he Those were found lyrics. Like he actually yeah. intercepted a letter uh, that a doctor had written about that's one true. of his patients. Yeah, that's true. A, a woman that was horribly burned beyond recognition, the hamburger lady, and like that she looked so disgusting that you know the, the medical personnel couldn't come in the room without losing their lunch just looking at her. And so that was now hamburger. that song. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. When I met Pat, I remember early on you playing that song. And I remember, like, for you playing that song and one and two, and you announced that every fucking time. I feel like that's your favorite Thorne McGrissel song. It just is the first one on this record, but it is one. I just remember you saying that to people. Like, I remember so many nights over there yeah. where, where that would come on and you were like, attention. <laughs> <laughs> Had something to say about it. The third song on here, Subhuman, mm. I think that was their first single. No, 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 not Subhuman. Yeah, it was United. United. Well, Discipline was a single. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know what the first single was. I thought it, I thought it was United. And then a, and then a fucked up band to have singles from, though? It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, the liner notes in this album. Uh, I forget who did them. Um, but he basically calls them the Velvets of the New Age. I like that. I do like that. So tell me about... Um, let me show this first and I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to show the Tony Conrad stuff because I really got into that. You know, um, Tony Conrad. And he did... From Faust, Faust, I believe, the Crot Rock band, oh. and ended up doing different stuff. They linked up together in the 2000s to do stuff. This is uh, Taking Issue. This is so fucking cool. Where uh, Genesis is playing uh, violin. I'm watch that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> he plays violin in that one? Genesis plays all, like, violin with Tony Conrad. This is really good. It's, it's really, it's just like, you know, fucking craziness. So gonna, uh, and they worked together until Tony Conrad died. Uh, but, you know, if you like Faust, uh, do you like Faust? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I don't have any Faust albums. Actually, that's not true, I do. Mm. Um, and it, it's all live with Tony Conrad. See, I like that. Actually, Tony Conrad is playing um, uh, the violin there, mm -hmm. too. And you see how Genesis played his? Because uh, he, when he fell out of Rick Rubin's... Uh, oh, yeah, when he fell yeah. out of... So I had to play like that. No kidding. Yeah, I was just reading that story the other day about how... Um, really? The house uh, fire... Yeah, talk about, talk about that for the, for the people. Well, who invited him? Somebody invited him. He was a him. guest. Yeah, he was Rick a... Rubin did not invite him. Rick Rubin did not like him. Right. Somebody invited them. him. 
Somebody who's a guest for right. somebody. It was his plus one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the story was the house is burning down and, and uh, Genesis was forced to flee out of the um, second or third floor window. Came down on concrete and really, I mean, he broke his wrist. He broke his Yeah, he couldn't play shoulder. bass after that. Like one side of his body was just, you know, affected. And then, and then, he, and then he, I guess he settled for millions. Yeah, that's how he got a lot of his surgery. Yeah. You know, surgery. Mm -hmm. There's the other Tony Conrad release. I love these albums, you know, these yeah. these Tony Conrad and Genesis Fjord sure ripped albums. Right. And it's not much to look at. Yeah. Because uh, they, uh, Psychic TV had this thing where they would do these like cardboard mm. um, sleeves. But I mean, the stuff you're showing is really rare and hard to get. <laughs> yeah, you, think? you won't see it now. I just jumped yeah. on it, you know. Yeah. Um, I was living in Lakeland. I don't, I don't. I I don't like to say that that's like a ghetto, but it was a rough. It was a rough area, man. I had I had this shit crank, and when I bought it, dude, I would crank. You could hear it down the street. You could like people would be like, "Hey, there's there's Neil, man. He's doing his thing." You know. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I do. I do my thing. I don't give a fuck. You feel that? Yeah. Did you know. um did you know that um that I didn't notice either, but Cozy did a book in twenty seventeen. I did not know that because I do not particularly um I don't I don't You gotta understand you gotta understand how I feel about her and and uh Fucking the other dude. It's like I I Chris, don't. Uh, no, not Sleazy. Sleazy um, went with Jen. Mm. So it was. Was it was it Chris Chris Cozy and Genesis? Was that? Because Sleazy was Chris. Uh, was it, it was it was two different Chris's. Okay. But what what is your um, your opinion of Cozy then? And, uh, after after the Thriving Gristle was garbage. Yeah. That's why I don't really have much of an opinion uh, with yeah. her later stuff. For me, it was garbage. And um, with Peter Christensen, he he did really great. He went with Genesis. They did a few Psychic TV records. Then he went on to form Coil. Now, I don't know if you ever heard Coil, but I bought some Coil. Yeah, Coil isn't enough. You, you ever wanted to like something? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't do it, man. Yeah. I, I sold all those records. And they were, they were records, man. I, I sold those records for like 30 bucks a piece. Wow. I, to two or three of them. And uh, it was, I just didn't like it. Yeah. I thought he, uh, but he had, he just got in this gigantic argument with Genesis Georgia to the point where Genesis said, uh, not to talk ill of the dead, but where Genesis said, um, he wasn't even an early member of the group. It's like, well, anybody that has their early records can share their one. <laughs> but they had, they had such a, a bad falling out. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, Sleazy was a Buddhist. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have um do you have third and final report earlier as well? Yeah. That was a good one. Don't talk about these. Oh yeah. Those are, there you go. So these are um <clears throat> the second and third report. Second and third or the first and, and second album. This is my favorite. Second album of course, great. Yeah, it's, that's uh, my favorite. This yeah. is really good too. But like yeah. this, you know, I remember every album I bought during springtime. Yeah. It was give me convenience or give me death from the Dead Kennedys compilation. Mm -hmm. I bought that in, around Easter. I bought this at, at a different Easter. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, I remember like all the Easter albums I bought because you know it feels good outside and shit like that. I will say on uh, third and final report. They have a song in there, don't they, called Death Threats? Yeah, where yeah. it's Death Threats. And it's actually, it's actually like, death threat. uh, the, the recording, you know, on, on the telephone, the recordings of people, you know, that actually... And, and one of the Death Threats, apparently, was um, Airy Up from the Slits. Really? Yes. I don't fucking know that. Yeah, I guess she really, really disliked Robert. I mean, look, look at that fucking crazy artwork, though. It's like, wow. Like, what do you... Yeah. What, what's the innuendo there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Wow. You know, and see, it's it's not, not nothing wrong with it on first glance, but then when you really think about it, did you show them that? No, yeah, nobody had a daughter. 
Then? Yeah. Then? He, I mean, Jen's got like two daughters now. Or, yeah. Like the glare is, mm -hmm. is atrocious. But. And then I have first annual report, which which never really came out as a... Yeah. Well, the first annual report is not the first record. It was... It was recorded first, but right. it wasn't the first record. It wasn't record. released. Yeah. And see, I just, I hate, I hate my artwork for it, you know? Oh, yeah, this is all you were telling me yeah, about. Yeah, I, I hate the artwork for it. It's so stupid. It looking. looks like a boot <laughs> or something. Bootleg. They're all bootlegs, though. Yeah. They, there's, there's releases. I looked, um, like, releases that had better art, but it was, like, the same six tracks. Right. Like, Scars of V. So those are the, the tracks that came. Yeah, very out. friendly, dead bait. You can, you can hear that. Genesis bass on that shit. There was a really good double album uh, compilation, bootleg live called "Nothing Short of a Total War." Yeah, yeah, I got that on something. I have it. You know, I had to tape it on cassette tape. You know, "Mission of Dead Souls," the last live performance of Throbbing Gristle. When did that take place? The last performance. Eighty. So they didn't make it to the 80s. No, it's certainly. It was 81. Right before Psychic TV, basically. 81. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right before Psychic TV and, and, and Chris and Cozy left and Chris and uh, Sleazy. I guess that's why they call him Sleazy, right? Because there's two Chris. Oh, Chris's, Chris's, yeah. And Sleazy went with Genesis Gorgers. Yeah, which, mm -hmm. was, which was the far superior pair because the Chris and Cozy stuff sucked. Yeah. Like, hard, hard dick. This is the first Psychic TV album. Of course, The Hand of Chance. Oh, well. Which is pretty much, like, I, I don't even know. I don't well, even know. show them the back Genesis looks like a priest or something. Yeah, and that's Sleazy right there. Yep. Uh, you know who else was in the band early on is, um, fucking, um, what's me? Alex Ferguson. Oh, yeah. From so, uh, Alternative Television. Yeah. So it was Alex Ferguson, Sleazy, and Genesis that formed this band, and and um, and they there's an album out the show at the uh, um, the ATV and Throbbing Gristle uh, CD, and then you know they also worked on Dreams Less Sweet, which there's an album after that. Um, Neil's got whole sections of his room <laughs> that have Genesis PR's releases. Thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> Heathen Earth was yeah, that's like, like a thirty CDs like in a row right there. Well, here's here's a uh, this one was good. We'll skip forward to uh, his the band that he was with like at the end that started in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. which was PTV three. Yeah, the the new. Incarnation, or however you say it, I like that because it was so colorful. And see, when this came out, Justin had just moved back because he tried to live in North Carolina for a while. He came back with uh, Ashley Dryden, who he was married to, mm -hmm. and uh, he just couldn't do it. He came back with his big beard and shit like that. And uh, this was like the soundtrack for us. Uh, it was like 2007 when he came back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I missed him horribly at that time. Um, but it's funny that I mentioned that because I'm a bitch. Because when he was away, not that anymore. When he was away, uh, the Throbbing Gristle had put out a new album. Oh, really? Yeah. Did they? Did with they, everybody. Oh, with everybody in it. With everybody in it, and it was this one. What's that called? This is, um, son of a bitch. This is the re live reunion from the two. This isn't even live, dude. This is, this is, um, <clears throat> this is, uh, studio shit. Oh, they, they, um, reformed and did it studio. The Endless Knot, yeah. So this was about 2006, 2007. And <clears throat> I got this and I recorded one for Justin and <clears throat> sent it to him. And all of them had uh, these weird totems in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I remember, and, and it's okay. 
Um, Does it sound anything like the Throbbing Gristle of the late 70s? Well, no, because Throbbing Gristle of the late 70s were making their own instruments and, and shit like this. And mm -hmm. Admittedly, um, uh, for things like this, they, they were buying synthesizers and, and buying, they were buying things, they, you know, big mm -hmm. synthetic instruments. They were no longer circuit bending shit and trying to like make their own stuff. But it does make it a little less interesting. But this is a good ass album. This is a good astronaut. Let me ask you this, because you know a lot of things, Genesis, if you are, it's related. And um, at some point I heard <clears throat> that by the end of Throbbing Gristle, prior to Psychic TV, that Genesis Peorge was on such a drug binge <laughs> that he, he collectively lost his memory. Like, he lost, like... That's all okay. memory and like when he went into psychic TV he was like a blank slate <laughs> that's what they say yeah I don't know if that's true or not but you've heard that too I've heard it yeah 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 I've heard it I don't know if that's true it's yeah. not like uh, Johnny Rotten fucking having meningitis and fucking losing his memory yeah where it's documented yeah right that, that's what they say uh, I mean who am I to say whether it's true or not but yeah I've heard that I mean only he can say that right yeah or they yeah. You gotta say, I gotta say he because me me being a cis male or however the fuck you say it these days, mm -hmm. um, you know I. Uh, it's just what we were used to. It's what we're used to. Yeah. Give me, up. Give me but, a fucking um, break. But we're working on it. <laughs> Here's a Throbbing Gristle um, album when they got back together. This was only available at live shows in 2009. Throbbing Gristle, what's it called? It's called a Third Mind Movement. So this came with a patch it's somewhere. It's on something. Because see, here's the thing. I get a record with a patch. I'm putting it on something. Is this studio or live? Yeah, studio. Okay. Uh, is it as good as the um, Endless Knot? No. Not by a long shot. In fact, I probably wouldn't have paid $35 for this if I would have known. But it's here. Yeah. You know, it's here. Get used to it. You know, but it, not not one of my favorite uh, yeah. selections. This is pretty cool. This is the Majesty. Like it's like him and Lady J. Oh yeah, you know, all the Vinci shit. That's another interesting uh, Genesis Pure story because wasn't the idea that their bodies would merge into like yeah into one thing? Or yeah, like that? and they looked, dude. Early on, they looked the same. Like when they came out of surgery, they looked the same. Then you know Genesis started aging like us. Mm. Uh, men do mm -hmm. might not be right. a popular topic but you know and she died he he got big right she she died uh, around 2007 Seven. Yeah. yeah she died of a, a heart condition that was actually undiagnosed <clears throat> now I have a heart condition but I'm diagnosed so mm. it's gotta suck to not even know you have it oh well, yeah and she was like a you know, like a smoker and shit like that Jen was not a smoker he ate cigarettes he hated like oh really yeah which is weird because like it's like he like hated like cigarette smoking so much um which I'll give you an example over here and she was a cigarette smoker so I was like how do you fucking I guess you know, she just did what she wanted mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah yeah here it is Breathe where he made a whole psychic TV album about like I think it's like his grandfather or somebody oh, like not being able to like breathe and they're like gagging and shit like that like gosh and and lady j smoked oh did she really yeah so i just thought that was a, a little ironic that's definitely all right yeah a lot of these a lot of these i bought oh, you got them all over the room well like, all like four sides of us were surrounded by genesis Fiorge, you know? what do you mean I mean, you got it there and there. And there. Oh, yeah. yeah. At least. Yeah. And I have my cassettes. And my 45s. I'm not digging to those 45s. You got um, Psychic TV and or Throbbing Gristle 45s? I don't have any 4 I have Psychic TV 45s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check this out, though. This is... I want to talk about this. This is okay. Splinter Test with Genesis and uh, Larry Thrasher. This is part of the uh, Electric Newspaper series. Which they put these out. I bought this for one cent on Amazon. Wow. At the time, Amazon was charging two dollars for shipping of CDs. Mean. So it was two dollars and one cent. Um, and 
And I have other electric newspaper ones. I don't have them all, and I probably won't really get them all. This is the best one. I'm going to tell you why. He found this weird underground psychedelic show and um and snippets of, uh, snippets of it are on there you can all you can hear like mm -hmm. pretty much whole shows and it's so fucking weird yeah it's like the under the the underground crusade or some shit like that it's so fucking you, you gotta hear it to really yeah and, and it's all samples it's all like samples that he took but from that radio show i guess it must have been public domain because he just like it's all over this Okay. It's probably like 50, between 50 and 100 tracks on that. And it's some kind of weird psychedelic radio show from the 1960s, I believe. It's from the uh, 60s. So I'm going to look it up and, and yeah. waste more time. But We're good. I think we got like, um, yeah, it's 30 minutes now. That's my, that was my favorite one. Yeah. Um, he worked with Mare's Bow. The Majesty was a uh, was a spoken word project wow, with that. that's him and Brian Dahl. Yeah, that's that's his lips because he had you know the the gold yeah. the gold teeth. I remember getting that and like rolling around in my homie's van. The big Chuck, you remember Chuck? Yeah. He's long gone now. Rest in peace. I guess both of you guys. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but see, that's 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 pretty great. Like a little psychic cross on the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Got the tattoos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got that shit on my legs. It always looks funny when I show it. Yeah. It's like, it's twisty. Yeah, that's a good one. Good. So, uh, I mean... What else could you really say? I mean, do you want to see the last album I bought where that I was like really, really jamming to? Yeah, sure. All right, well, here's. This is a good one. This is, uh. I don't know if you show that one. <laughs> You're not going to show it? <laughs> nah. This is. Let's show this one. This is with his drummer. Yeah, this one with his drummer. That is. This is close to what he looked like at the end. That's yeah, this is 2016. Their appearance was like. And this is really good. This is like experimental. Um, the band PTV3, it was like a, a psychedelic revival. You know, kind of like a, like if Hawkwind came out today, it would be wow. kind of what like PTV3 was. You know. Um, and I've ta I've talked to I've talked to the drummer like I he's a, he's a really good dude like really like enthusiastic you yeah. know about the band and about like Genesis and, and things like that he's like a really good dude he's probably like I mean he's probably like in tears every day you know because you can tell he was he was really like super into it you know yeah um I want to find Alienist that that was a really fucking really great record. Yeah, Alienist was really good. This is like before, like he was sick. This is with PTV3, so like you know. Actually, no, I'm sorry, the drummer's right there. I want to show that one. And they had a really good, really good. Me and Justin seen them live twice in Philly. Oh really? Uh, yeah, once at Johnny Brenda's. <clears throat> oh wow! My dad I like came. Johnny Brenda's. My dad came to that show, and Justin was newly single. And, like, all of these, like, you know, there's a lot of goth, like, 30, 40-something, a lot of 40-something goth girls there. And uh, they were all hitting on my dad. And my dad was just there. I don't I don't remember why the hell my, my dad was there. My dad went to an anti-scene show with me one time, too, and I don't know why he's... He, my dad is... My father's mentally ill. <laughs> he is. And, uh, yeah, he went to the show, and these girls were throwing themselves at my father. Who is just sitting at the bar, has no interest in the band. Wow. I don't even know why I wanted to go. Yeah. Um, but then, but Justin was like, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm here with my son and his, and his, you know, and his dumb friend. And Justin's like, I'm, I'm said dumb friend. I'm single, you know. And they're like, fuck out of here. Yeah. And poor, that, and, poor Justin. <laughs> and my dad was like, I'm married. And they're like, so. Yeah. I'm like, that is, that's bizarre. <laughs> that is so 
so fucking bizarre. We stayed at that particular Johnny Friend show till three in the morning. And I had to wake up at, at six to get ready for work. Oh man. Oh, oh I did it too, and I was I was out. You do that in your young days. Yeah, yeah. I I couldn't do that shit now. Oh, I like this. See, all of their all of the new records were like this. They always had three or four tracks, but they're uh, long as fuck. You know, right. like ten minutes, eleven minutes. Yeah. You know, nine minutes. And they had a great guitar player, a great drummer. And um, a great bassist who wasn't Genesis Gorgeous, you know. Yeah. Genesis Gorgeous played violin when he could and vocals. You know, the drummer was great. That like that's why it was such a great band because of the drummer and the bass player and the guitar player. The guitar player was so fire. I think his name was Brian something. No, I'm sorry, Jeff Burner. Okay. Jeff. You're close, Burner Fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I got so much here, man. I can't remember everything, man. Well, we're going on 35 minutes now. 35 minutes? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going uh, to conclude. This is a tough one because, you know, like I said, this is somebody that's really pivotal in uh, music, and it's also somebody that's very special um, to Neil and to me, really. Yeah, you know, uh, Ben, Cartoon Ben, just did that poster up on Monday for me. This? Yeah. Wow. I think we should close with showing that. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, we should show it. We'll do one more record. Yeah. I got this. Um, beginning of February, I was sick. I had a cold. Beginning of February, you know, this, all that shit was going around. Right. I got this in the mail. Um, the evening sun turns crimson. crimson. Um, now this is uh, Derek uh, Geheim. You know, do the ju jubilee. Oh, Derek Jarman? Yeah, Derek Jarman. It was a, a movie that he did, that they did a sound... An early Psychic TV did a... Um, he worked with them with, with themes and, and things like that. They, they Genesis worked close with him in the early 80s. Okay. So this is like a reimagining of like um, an early uh, film that he did. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And this is the last thing that actually came out. This was recorded in 2017, released in late... 2019 so wow. i bought it in february wow you know and actually pretty good they released this mm -hmm. as a floppy disc like a floppy picture disc that looked like the psychic cross mm -hmm. i didn't buy that because it's like i don't i don't i don't buy yeah. i don't buy floppy discs yeah you know right i don't i have it's a rule yeah i don't give a fuck i'm not gonna buy that because i don't buy floppies mm -hmm. i buy cassettes i buy 78s if it, I ain't, buy if it ain't stiff it ain't worth it ain't no it's not if it's floppy if it's not floppy, it's not going in. Yeah. My collection. But I, I, the the case is weird. Yeah. It's weird. I don't like it. It collects a lot of dust. Uh, not your standard uh, plastic not. CD tray. It's not. Yeah. So if it breaks, then I'm like, man, I'll never find another one of those. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's so much to really, to really talk about. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that electric newspaper. Oh, yeah, here's another electric newspaper. It's not as good. I started buying the other electric newspapers, but you can't you can't handle the... Uh, you just can't do the splinter test one. It's just like... And it's like a lot of weird-ass shit from, like, 30s horror movies and, mm -hmm. and things like that, but, like... It just, you know... The thing is, like, the best one I spent one cent on. Yeah, yeah. And this was, like, $10, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. Wow. Me and Justin did like a remix CD. 